Hello and welcome to lesson 2, rendering our first sprite to the screen. This lesson will be continuing on from lesson 1. I am RM2K Dev and you can find more XNA lessons at www.xnatutor.com. For this lesson, we'll be using Microsoft Visual Studio 2010, XNA4 and possibly Paint. So, as this lesson is continuing on from the first lesson, initializing XNA in VB 2010, I'm going to open that project. Now, the project is loaded and I'm just going to verify that it's still working by clicking the play button. So as you can see, uh, lesson one is still working. I'm going to make some changes to the form just to update this title here and then we'll begin with the, the programming. Rendering our first sprite to the screen. Lesson two. Xnatutor.com. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to want is a sprite. What I've done is I've gone to Google and I've just found a PNG of the XNA logo. I'm going to bring that over here now. This is what I'm going to be drawing to the screen. Now, in order to do this, all we need to do is drag the file from a folder into the content. Now, as you can see, Visual Studio has added that file into this content section here. So, let's load that file into our game. You might notice some of you XNA users out there that we're actually using a Windows Forms application. However, we're using the content pipeline in Visual Basic. Now, I'm not going to explain it in this tutorial, but I have a class that I'm going to bring into this project, and I'll be providing the source code to this class on the website www.xnatutor.com. Um, this class basically allows us to access the content pipeline while not having a game loop instantiated. Uh, when I say game loop, I mean the default project template game loop. So I'm just going to quickly copy the source code from that and bring that over. So all I need to do is grab these. Okay, so I'm going to make a new file. This is file is going to be a class. So I'm going to right click on initializing XNA01. Oh, ignore that name for now. Um, this is the second project, remember? It's just continuing on from that last one. So right click on that, select add, and then select class. We're going to call this class content. And inside of that class, I'm going to paste some source code. I'll be making this source code public. Um, I'll post it on my website and I'll post a link to it in the description. Um, I'll also put it on paste bin as a backup. Uh, but all you have to do is copy this class in. We're not going to go into the into the mechanics of how it works, but just understand that it will help. So before we do this, I'm just going to make some changes to this. Change that to graphics device. Set that to that. And I'm just going to change the name of these classes. Okay. So now that we have this class in our project, all we have to do is make a reference to it. In order to do that, all we must do is start typing public our content as game con what I call it class content dot game content now we have to instantiate that so in form load just underneath me dot show I'm going to type our content equals new class content dot game content now this takes the parameter of a graphics device so I'm actually going to just move that out of form load and into the initialize graphics function here so just above return value equals true I'm going to pass it g device 
From here on out, we can use our content to load anything we like from the content pipeline, which is this thing here. So I'm going to create a new function called load graphics. So I'm going to change that to sub. There we go. And in this sub, actually at the top of our project, we're going to declare a texture. I'm going to call mine XNA logo. We're going to declare that as a texture 2D file. You can call yours whatever you like, but because I'm using the XNA logo, that's what I'll be calling mine, as you can see here. <clears throat> so now we actually need to load this image into that variable. So down here in the function load graphics, we're going to type XNA logo equals our content dot content dot load. Now this takes two parameters in two sets of brackets and this might look a little weird but what this does is this lets you define a type and then load it on the second parameter so the type is going to be of texture 2d and what that means is that we're just telling the content pipeline that we're going to begin loading a texture 2d file so that it knows how to process it the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set that to be xna logo.png Now, one more thing I forgot to add is up here where we've declared our content. I'm just going to set the default directory of that to be dot content dot root directory equals content. The reason we're doing that is because when the content pipeline compiles itself, it outputs a content folder into the binary directory of the project. I'm just going to verify that everything works by clicking the play button. Okay. Oh, I forgot to load the graphics. Alright. Just above this function, uh, where it says retval equals true, just above that, just put load content. Uh, load graphics. That's what I called it, sorry. Once again, I'll just verify that that works and let it see it's detected a problem. I'm just going to pause the recording and quickly find out what that problem is and then I'll resume. Okay, sorry about that. I just identified that the problem was I gave it the extension .png. I should mention that in the content pipeline you don't have to give files an extension because when you set them to be a texture 2D it automatically knows to check for any file called xna logo and then .png, .bitmap, .jpeg, etc. That also applies to sound files, FX files, um, and models. So I've just gone ahead and taken the .png off of the end of that file name and we'll just verify that that runs while I click play. That runs, so all good. So now that we've initialized the graphics card and loaded up a texture and the game has entered the game loop because it started drawing this clear cornflower, uh, cornflower blue color we're going to need to create something called a sprite batch now what a sprite batch is is it's a collection of uh, it's a way of drawing texture 2ds to the screen uh, it's very simple it's not as efficient as uh, doing it through say uh, rendering textures to a quad but it's it, it's quite it's plenty fast enough for our uses. So I'm just going to go public s batch as sprite batch. Now back down here in our initialize graphics function, just above load graphics, I'm going to initialize that sprite batch. So I'm going to say s batch equals new sprite batch, and that takes a graphics device as the first parameter. So we're going to give that g device. Now if we scroll down a little bit to our game loop, this is where our game is rendering the screen currently. So just above device.present and below gdevice.clear, we're going to put sbatch.begin. And what this does is this tells the sprite batch to begin operation. 
then just below that we're going to say s batch dot end so now any drawing we're doing using this sprite batch we're going to do it in between these two tags what this means is it means you can have multiple sprite batches each rendering different things with different types of effects um, at different stages of the gameplay a good example of why this is useful is you might have a, a sprite batch for rendering your maps and you also might have a sprite batch for rendering say particle systems and transparent effects and things of that nature anyway back to the topic back inside of this sprite batch dot begin and sprite batch dot end we're going to put s batch dot draw now you'll see the first parameter that this takes is a texture now we already have the XNA logo loaded as a texture, so all we have to do here is type XNA logo, and we're done. The second parameter is a rectangle, and this determines where on the screen and how wide this image is going to be displayed as. So what we're going to do is we're going to say new rectangle. Uh, the first parameter of this function is the X location, so I'm just going to put this at 100. The second parameter is the Y, so I'm going to put this at 100. Now, in case you don't know, X and Y refer to the position in pixels on the screen. X being left and right, Y being up and down. So 100 pixels right and 100 pixels down is what we're doing at the moment. Now, the width and height of this. I don't know the width and height of this image. Um, there's a way we can get that. So all we have to do is type XNA logo dot width. And that's going to give us the width of this texture resource in pixels. And again, we'll do that for height. This might not be the most efficient way of doing it, being that we have to make a reference to the texture every time we want to get the width and height. So something you might want to do is actually specify the width and height as whatever they are. 500 by 100, for example. But as I said, I don't know the width and height, so I'm going to put that back in there. So we'll just close off that function. And the last parameter of the draw function is the color. This uh, refers to the color that's used to tint the sprite that's being drawn onto the screen. So if you'd like no tinting, we use color dot white. Now if all has gone well, when I run this project, you should see the XNA logo being displayed at position 100 by 100 at its full width and height. And there you go. Now, sorry about that, I just needed some water. Okay, so the XNA logo has been displayed and it's been moved to pixel 100 by 100 for the top left corner. So what if we did want to tint this sprite? Let's say for example that the XNA logo is actually a Mm -hmm, let's think. He's actually a zombie killer and he's out and he's killing zombies and he's just become infected. So, as a special effect in our game where our hero has become infected, we're going to tint him as green because he's infected. So now when I run this project, you should see that the XNA logo has been tinted green. That's just a quick example of how to use the sprite batch to draw uh, texture 2D files to the screen and also how to load them using the content pipeline. <clears throat> Another thing that we can do um, just just to show that the the image itself is moving remembering that these are the X and Y positions of where the image is being drawn onto the screen. So if we go back to our main form, oh, I'm just going to correct that title there we go. I'm going to select the picture box and I'm going to drag in two horizontal scroll bars. If I can just find them in my sidebar here, there. So there's the first horizontal scroll bar. I'm just going to stretch that out a little bit. And I'm going to duplicate that. Actually, I want to delete that second one. I'm going to make that a vertical scroll bar. So let me just find a vertical scroll bar. There we go. I'm just going to put those somewhere on the screen here and I'll just pull that corner there back a little bit okay so let's call this X scroll 
and we'll call this one here Y scroll. <laughs> so what does this give us? This gives us two scroll bars on top of the game form. And again, we can interact with these scroll bars, but they don't do anything yet. However, they do have a value, and that value ranges from the minimum value of zero to the maximum value of, let's make that 300 for both of them. Now what we can do in our game loop is if we set the X and Y position to the value of X scroll bar and Y scroll bar, we should be able to move the sprite around the screen by changing those scroll bars. So if we set that to X scroll dot value and Y scroll dot value, when I execute this project, you'll see what I mean. Now I can grab this scroll bar and I can move it. I can move the sprite around the screen just by dragging these scroll bars. Now there's one thing that you will note is that when I do grab one of these scroll bars, I am interrupting the, the game loop. <clears throat> and that's just simply a matter of threading because the game loop is actually running on the thread of our window. When I grab the window or attempt to interact with a Windows Forms component, I'm interrupting that thread and taking over priority while Windows handles this scroll bar. We'll tackle this in another lesson um, to do with the game loop and multi-threading. But for now, that's loading a sprite onto the screen and displaying it in Visual Basic 2010. Ah, so thanks for listening. I hope this tutorial has helped you. Once again, I'm RM2K Dev from xnatutor.com. Enjoy.